Hi guys, as you might have seen in the last video, I've been fooling around a bit with this uh, high voltage pulse system. Um, what I decided to try next to see if we could actually charge a battery with both the leads in the cup of water. So the way I've gone about it is I've got two diodes in there, uh, one facing down, one facing up if you want to call it that um, cathode in on one of the diodes in the water anode on the other one in the water and then of course running to this 6 volt battery um, on the appropriate terminals now once I did that hooked the battery up plugged it in to the power supply two things happened the Neon on the transistors exploded instantly and this is what happened to my power supply. Now that's only a 30 volt maximum power supply and it makes all sorts of clicking noises. I can't adjust the voltage. So we've cooked that as well. Um, so I've gone and hooked it up to a battery uh, and I've also hooked up another battery to collect the back EMF. Uh, that's at 12.15 at the moment. Now I'll show you what happens and this is a part I don't like actually hooking this up and I'll show you why um, a little 6 volt battery, this is another dead one that's been sitting around that I've been trying to revive um, it's currently got 5.24 volts in it and no matter how much you charge it, it seems to drop down to that voltage uh, 57 millivolts at the moment in the cap uh, and the meters hooked up across the two probes as in the previous video so that's pretty much well the only thing I've changed is plonk these two in the water the two leads from the battery into the water and um, hooked up this battery to catch the back EMF from the primary coil in the ignition coil and that's when all the trouble started so yes I've got one fried box of electricity and a um, neon that's no longer happy so I'll hook it up now if I jump I'm sorry but I've been electrocuted many times and I'll show you why managed not to this time okay there's our battery voltage of the two diodes that are sitting in the glass of water it'll take charge then it'll start to come back down once it starts to get excited it will start taking a charge but it drops again um, it's saying about 1.8 volts across those two terminals that are in the water now first time I got zapped was when I went to wind the pot it would seem now, since I've done this, everything has a high voltage. Got, this is our um, gutter globe, as you've seen before. I'll just turn this light out because it's not really bright. But uh, that's what happens when I grab the pot. That's the handle of the pot. It wasn't very exciting touching that. That's the base of the pot. Um, our capacitor bank. Even this steel frame that used to bolt onto the car around the coil. Now the earth is separate. It's insulated from the earth of the coil. As you can see that's got high voltage. Every battery terminal. The run battery. Both negative and positive charge battery 
which as you can see is coming up very fast everything has a high voltage even the um, power going to the base of the transistors has got a hell of a lot of volts going into it and they're still going, I don't know why um, this is one of the wires coming out of the glass of water that's the other wire uh, this is the power going into the battery everything has got a high voltage going across it everything even the resistors on my circuit board you can't touch a thing once this thing's up and running everything has got somewhere around 700 volts in it I'm guessing I did try and measure it with one of my meters and it was uh, goodbye to another meter but yeah we can't adjust anything when it's got that sort of current going through it and that's the handle on the uh, pot but the thing I'm really spinning out about is how on earth the base of the transistors can handle that much current or that much voltage without breaking down everything is fully loaded now this is I don't know if you can see there the other wire in there is still in there I'll just cut it off because it's not needed I only need the one wire um, I'll try and find a 110 volt neon which I'm not going to hold with my fingers because I've already made that mistake once just to show you that the globe was legit So that's really cool. Everything has got a high voltage going through it. Everything. Ever since I've hooked this battery up into the water like that, I can't touch any of the circuit without getting a serious nasty zap. So this battery's. Uh, come right down now it's starting to take some charge and um, you've seen the voltage pulses that are going in there simply from drawing it out of the water now if I lift it out of the water you can hear the uh, sound change the voltage is starting to drop back down in the battery drop it back in the water look at that so there you go We're charging a battery with both the battery leads chucked into the water which would normally flatten the battery and make hydrogen and the two I don't know if you can see that the water is pretty moody but you can see the bubbles forming on the electrodes that's what I started out to do to see if I could make hydrogen just with a single wire system uh, you can but there's absolutely nothing in that at all a couple of bubbles is nothing but um, this has turned out to be very interesting charging a battery with both the leads chucked in a cup of water that the other two probes are in uh, not forgetting that um, the battery's being charged through the water via one wire and uh, yeah like you've seen everything every component of this system now has a high voltage across it and um, the transistors are not blowing up for some reason um, so I just thought I'd share that with you 
this uh, charging out of the glass of water is working. However, it's had some adverse effects and I now have a power supply to try and fix as well. Um, we are charging the battery. Now, I don't really know, being short of meters at the moment, as to uh, what this battery might be doing with um, this is actually our run battery here. So I'll have to um, check the voltage on that after an hour or so running. But yes, pretty interesting. Everything's live. Most of these are only 22 volt capacitors in here as well. And I know you need some serious voltage to light one of these globes up. Not so much amps, but you certainly need the volts. Okay, well, that's it for the time being. Um, see what kind of answers we can come up with about that. Why everything's still holding together with that high voltage going through it. And we are able to charge a battery with both the battery leads chucked in a glass of water. Cheers from the Tin Man.